Hello, everybody. Welcome. Tuesday, 2 p.m. Pacific time. It's a beautiful day here in Tucson, Arizona. I am Carol Rundell, and welcome to Tips for Incorporating Your Faith into Your Business. Flip it around so you can see my pretty face. Hi, everybody. How y'all doing? I am so glad that you're here. This is going to be a really exciting teaching this time. Go ahead and invite your friends from Twitter to join us. Please be sure to ask any questions, and I always love hearts, so I'm so excited to have you. Let's start by doing a little review of what we talked about last week, okay? All right, here we go. We go. Oh, look at all these hearts. Yay, yay, yay. Thank you, guys. I love you back. All right, last week we talked about how we identify ourselves determines our lives because behavior follows identity, not the other way around. We talked about the old man, which is human nature, versus the new man, which is Christ in us. And the first commandment given to the church in the Pauline epistles concerns how we think about ourselves, not about our behavior. Hmm, interesting. And as followers of Jesus Christ, we are to get our identity from him, not from the world. You see, our identity in Christ is unchangeable because he is unchangeable. So this week, we're going to talk about producing the right kind of fruit in your life. You see, fruit results from identity. That's why we had to talk about identity first. Matthew 7, 17 and 18 says, Even so, every good tree brings forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree brings forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. You see, you just wrong. You can try to put on a show of how you want people to perceive you, but if it's not who you really are, if it's not coming from how you identify yourself to be, it's not going to last. Who was it that said, you can fool some of the people some of the time or something like that. Was that Abraham Lincoln? I don't know. Somebody tell me. Anyway, the question now for us is what type of fruit are we manifesting in our lives? And for this, we're going to go to Galatians chapter 5. Okay. Start in verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, that seems like a pretty comprehensive list, but yet he says at the end of it, and such like. So there are more things. And those there may be some words in there that you're not quite familiar with. You know, the King James English is 400 years old. So look stuff up if you're not sure what each exact word means. But I think you get the overall picture here, that when we are identifying with our flesh, we are going to manifest things that aren't very pretty, and God warns us that we won't be able to inherit his kingdom if that's how we choose to live our lives. And remember here, this is always a choice. Just because you have Christ in you doesn't mean you manifest Christ in you. You have to make a choice, a decision, each and every moment of the day, how you're going to live your life. So let's continue in Galatians. And in verse 22, it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. List of only nine things, but yet, wow. Wouldn't you say that those nine characteristics were the characteristics of Jesus Christ? Isn't that him? If you were asked to describe Jesus, wouldn't you use those words? Yeah. Well, we have Christ in us, so we have the ability to manifest those same characteristics 
of him. And there's no law against it. Nobody can tell you that you can't be loving, you can't be kind, you can't have faith. It's just such a wonderful thing. All right, let's go over to John chapter 15. I want to talk a little bit about how we manifest these good fruit. 15, bring it a little closer so you can see a little better. We're going to start in verse 1. And this is Jesus talking. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. And it, husbandman means a farmer or a caretaker, a vineyard dresser. Every branch in me that bears not fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he purges it that it may bring forth more fruit. Okay, I'm gonna stop this. This word purge confuses a lot of people because you hear it and you think, no, he's gonna cut me down and, and I'm gonna die. That's not what purge means. If you're familiar with tending to vines, even if it, it you know, it could be a grapevine, a tomato vine, tending to vines, sometimes you'll find when you go out the vine has gone down and is touching the ground, is kind of dragging, okay? So the person who's responsible for taking care of that vine, what do they do? Do they just come along and cut it off and throw it away? No, they lift it up and they give it support so that it can continue to bear fruit. And that's what that word purge means. God will give us support and lift us up so that we can continue to bear fruit. A wonderful explanation. All right. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abides in me and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my father glorified that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. This section of the Gospels of God's Word, because it's such a wonderful promise from Jesus Christ, from God, that if we abide in him, if we allow his words to abide in us, and what does abide mean? It means live, right? Where you abide is where you live. So we are to live in him. That means up here, our thoughts are to live in his word. And that's how we can bring forth good fruit. So now let's go to some questions. There we go. Do I act one way at work and another way with my family and friends? Hmm. That's a really good question. Some people do. Some people are like one way when they're with certain people and a completely different way with others. And that can get confusing after a while. You don't know how you're supposed to act with a certain person. But God encourages us to let his words abide in us so that we can manifest that good fruit. Not flipping back and forth, but staying stable and abiding question to ask yourself. Oh, thanks for the hearts. I appreciate it. Are my words edifying or do they tear others down? Let's look at James chapter 3. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceeds blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Can a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either a vine, figs? So can no fountain both yield salt water. And 
we have to be very careful about the words that come out of our mouth because they can be so hurtful to people. Thank you for the hearts, guys. I appreciate it. And the word says that the tongue, which means the words that comes out of our mouth, is an unruly evil. So we need to watch what we say because we can't go around cursing people and then praising God. What does that make you? A hypocrite. And who did Jesus Christ call hypocrites? The Pharisees, those who were very much into, into tradition and law and keeping ordinances and not so much into loving and healing and blessing. Now, manifesting fruit is what do I need to do to abide in Christ? Whatever you need to do is probably going to be different from what I need to do. Good thing that we have Holy Spirit in us, Christ in us, and we have a communication line with God. Because the best way to know what we need to do is to ask our Father. Ask God. He loves us. He wants us to be blessed. He wants us to bear much fruit. It said so in John. So go to him. Ask him, what do I need to do to bear the fruit that you want me to so I can live a blessed life? Any questions, anybody? This is a huge subject. I could go on and on and on, but I'm not going to. Uh, we're going to talk about fear. Thank you for the hearts. You guys are so loving and kind. Thank you so much. Okay, next week we're going to talk about fear, where it comes from, and how to overcome it. So in the meantime, you can reach me on Twitter at Carol Rundle, same as my Periscope handle. My website is carolrundle.com. You can find me on Facebook. You can find me here on Periscope. I'd love to connect with you guys. I'd love to hear your connections. I mean, connections, your questions, or any suggestions that you may have regarding future topics. So until then, have a blessed week. God bless. Much love. Bye-bye.